Welcome to a Bredo M. Bay Roasted Podcast. We got a special one from Vegas. Uh, we got one Whoa. of my... Uh, one of my favorite people here, Jay Haran. A lot of you newer fans don't re- don't know. That you guys don't know. You guys don't realize the yeah, recognize. Don't recognize the OGs. <laughs> this is one of the OGs of the sport. Before we get to him, I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Listen, if you find yourself in need of marijuana, uh, go to Speedweed.com. They got everything from from joints to CBD oil to. I'm telling you, my back is killing me, and uh, I was like, I was fucking hurt, and then I, I put on this. I rolled on. CBD oil. Now I feel like a million bucks. So CB, uh, uh, go to speedweed.com, get uh, 20% off if you say, uh, mention MMA Roasted on $100 or, or more. So here with Jay Haran, uh, who actually, I used to follow you because I didn't actually go to Oceanside. I got sent to boarding school. But what I should have went, and I, I actually I had to train with the kids, and you were a legend. You were Jay Hieronymus back yeah, then. James Hieronymus. James Hieronymus. <laughs> you were 130 pounds, I think. Yeah, in and senior year. You yeah. fucked up everybody, though. Yeah, I was pretty good in you, high school. You were the county champion. Three-time county champ. Three-time, three-time, three-time uh, and, county and, champ. And how would you do in the in the states wrestling? States, I second my sophomore year, and I should have won it my my uh, senior year, but got robbed. You got it how? Uh, lost double overtime to Terry Showalter. Oh wow! Thank God, I still got my memory. I remember that. So you took second in the state twice. Second in the state twice, yes. Now, I, I ended up being all American in the high school nationals that that year, which is really tough. Um, high school nationals, all the you know badass kids around. Now I remember I went to Oceanside. Well, I remember I go to Oceanside, and I went to Maine, and I actually won the state championship in Maine. Uh, it was like Class C, and then I came back, and I was I still wasn't very good. I was just 103 pounds, and I was good for like Maine at that time. I was in a weak weight class, but I went back to Oceanside, and there was a, their legend was this kid named uh, John Girardi. He was a kid that everybody talked about, yeah. John Girardi, yeah. John Girardi, and he, I, he was like, you're the state champ, and he laughed at me, and he's like, ah, ha, ha, and he clowned me, <laughs> and he he was the king, but you know, you fucked up Girardi, though. I, I did, but I, he beat me, though, in in um in uh, my freshman year. A few kids beat me my freshman year that I remember that pretty much made me get better, and he's one of those kids. He definitely... You know, I lost to him, and I was like, man, I, I know I could beat this kid, so I just trained harder, and, you know, again, I, that's what made me, you know, get get my butt in the gym and stay after and learn. And you came back, and you beat him, what, your senior year, junior year? Uh, I think maybe that year I beat him again, freshman year. There was a few guys that beat me my freshman year, which was my first year wrestling, and I didn't really know nothing. I was just, you know, tough kid, and I didn't, you know, one thing I always had was I would never give up, and um, but I didn't have no technique. Right. So that's what, you know, these few kids beat me. He's one of them. And I was like, all right, you know, let me learn how to wrestle. <laughs> that's the thing about wrestling that um, that's the hardest thing about wrestling is that it, it, jiu-jitsu probably too, but it's one of those things where you only get better by getting the shit beaten out of you. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's hard to like convince a kid to do that or anybody to do that. It's one of those yeah. things where you, I mean, comedy, you know. You get good enough in comedy, you're gonna stop bombing. You'll still bomb once in a while. Yeah. But but wrestling is one of those things. I remember there was a kid named Joel Friedman. Yep. I went to the states with him. Dad, senior. He he was like, hey, come to my wrestling camp. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, every weekend. My wrestling. It was me, him, and I had one friend. Uh-huh. And they and I was their practice dummy. <laughs> I bet you got better though. Oh, I got so much. I better. I mean, that's the thing. I always tell like you know uh, um, parents, you know, if you want to put your kid in a sport that'll teach him discipline you know and and give him a direction and get him tough is is wrestling no doubt about it and and i mean you know it's it's pretty much at any high school so it's free yeah you know they just go from class to training after or or wrestling practice after school and it teaches them everything man it'll turn you into a man Uh, absolutely now you're from freeport right freeport yes uh, but by the way, if you guys don't know Freeport, it's very black. Uh, it's, <laughs> no, I, it's very Latin black. It's uh, white. It's everything. Uh, okay, you but gotta, for, okay. Well, back then when I was there, uh, we used to play them in football, and and when they would get off the bus, 
<laughs> we, had, we had already lost. Uh, oh, and this is in middle school. Well, once we saw the Freeport team, go, we're like, oh, this, this is not going to go well for us. Uh, we got a badass football squad, though, man. A lot of guys go to the pros from Freeport. So, yeah, you know, no. that the head coach is actually uh, – a little shout-out for him is Russ Sullen, which he is why I made it through high school because he was the assistant wrestling coach at the time. And he, you know, believed in me. And I was – I was dipping and dodging and wanted to quit. Like we talked earlier, I quit in my senior year, two-time county champ, state runner-up, and I quit. And then he would like make it a point to find me in school and oh, really? act like he's walking down the hallway and just so happened to run into me. And he got me back on the team. So, you know, he's he's a guy that so you, you, know, you definitely played football too. I didn't. He wanted me to. I was too small. I was ninety-one oh, okay. pounds. But he's a guy that that you know definitely looks over people and that's why the, you know the success of the athletes come out of it is is incredible now now, uh, now are you half black 100 percent black? black italian Ita- uh, so, so your mom's italian yes your dad's black yeah okay are you, are you close to your family uh yeah i mean well you know i was adopted when i was a baby so my family is my family that's who i know right uh, right, right growing up you were adopted you know? by a half black, half are you, your your original. No, my original mother is Italian, and my adopted mother is Italian. So, oh wow, yeah, yeah. So that that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, my real, real biological father, I don't know, but uh, uh, my Hieronymus comes from my adoptive father, and you know he was in my life for the beginning years of my life, and then they had a divorce. But he was a good guy; he was always around. Oh, nice. You know, but yeah, I went through the whole, you know, um. They were together, and then we moved to Freeport. Well, I actually, I grew up in Oceanside when I was young. Oh, nice. And then, you know, I went to uh, elementary and junior high, and we moved to Freeport at that time. And, um, yeah, but, I, I mean, you know, everybody has a story. I mean, I had a good life. I mean, no matter what, I got sisters with blonde hair, blue eyes. So I didn't know difference growing up when I was a kid. You know, I just, whatever, everybody's everybody, you know. Now, when your parents know. adopted you and you were winning counties, they were like, oh, we adopted the right kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we picked the one. The stork brought the right one. Because <laughs> I, I was thinking about that. I was, I, was, I was in my car and that girl, Simone, the Olympian, the black Olympian. Oh, and, yeah. And she was saying, yeah, I was adopted. Uh-huh. And I'm like, well, I'd adopt it. <laughs> like, can I, can I adopt you after you win the Olympics? Like, I mean, like yeah. at 18, could I, hey, you listen, but here's a house. Yeah, right? So, they picked the right one. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so now did you get in a lot of fights growing up? Or? Oh, yeah, a lot of fights. Well, I was a small kid. I didn't grow till later in my life. So, you know, going into ninth grade, I was 100 pounds. So, yeah, I was getting picked on elementary, junior high, and I only had older sisters. I didn't have an older brother. So there was no, you know, Hey, big bro, help me out with this. Nah, none of that. I had to just. Did you hook up with your sister's friends? No, no. Really? Was, yeah, not not really. Your blonde they, hair, they, blue eyes, sister that with their yeah, friends. Yeah, but they had they had a big age difference in between, so oh, not okay. big, but you know, not, uh, big enough to where they were like, "Well, get out of here, you little scrawny kid, bird chest." <laughs> I, so, I remember when I finally hooked up my sister's friends. It was like the happiest day of my life. I think yeah. I was in high school, <laughs> and I was like, "Finally, I almost got, got a fight." By the way, uh, t- uh, b- before we get back to Jay, today was one of the worst days. I go on the treadmill because uh-huh. I, I, I I'm all fat from Christmas. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go running. So yeah. I'm doing like seven. I'm doing like, I'm going to do 45 minutes at, at six, five, six, seven, seven. It was just a, a light jog, but I still go work out. So then the, my phone rings. So I get off the treadmill uh, at like 25 minutes. And I'm like, I take the phone call. Then I'm like, oh, okay. Normally treadmills stop when you get off. Yeah. Right? So I figured it stopped. Yeah. So I go back on. It didn't fucking stop. And I just, I went, whoa. I, I went face down. I hit my leg, the ACL fucking leg. I'm oh, like, no, wow. I'm hanging by the foot. Oh. And that's the footage you need for your show, right? Luckily, <laughs> luckily, no one saw me. I, I, it was so embarrassing. Wow. That was bad. And then I almost got into a, a fight at the comedy club last Tuesday at a Dime Bar. Oh, damn. So I, it was like a shitty crowd. There's nobody there. There's like 10 people there. It's like, except, of course, my, my, one of my friends was there, actually, apparently Gary from ESPN. It was the one show I didn't want him to see. And I, I'm picking on the crowd, and there was a guy with a beard. I'm like, oh, ISIS is here. And I'm making fun of everyone. <laughs> and I didn't realize the guy was like, fuck you. I'll fuck you in the ass. Blah, blah, I'm going to kill you. I'm like, oh, uh, hey, man, I'm kidding. I don't know if you're really an ISIS. I'm joking. He's with a girl. I'm like, oh, is she a hostage? And then, like, <laughs> So then he, the guy's getting even angrier, right? So then I, I leave him alone. <laughs> then I finally go I finally go back to them. I'm like, listen, man, just relax, queef. It's okay. That's my fir- favorite part of the show, by the way, when oh, you get on the audience. Oh, well, then after the show, the guy comes up to me, and he goes, hey, you want to fight? 
Uh, oh. I, I don't, like he's tall and drunk, and I'm like I could probably, uh, yeah. you know. But I'm like, <laughs> but I'm like I'm running the show. Yeah. I, I, what, what am I? Gonna, I'm gonna get sued. I don't. Need, I go listen, man. It's just a comedy show. He goes, no, you. Fu-, and he grabbed me. I go, oh, dude. Yeah. I go, get your hands off me. Yeah. He goes, well, what are you gonna do? I go, don't touch me. He goes, I'll touch you. He, make, he makes a phone call. Five huge ISIS. Middle Eastern guys show up. <laughs> They're outside, They're right? So then the bouncer's like, hey, go apologize. So he leaves. I go outside. I'm like, hey, man. And the guy goes, what did you say to him? I go, well, it was a comedy show. I called him ISIS, which is not what you want to tell a huge guy who has no idea. He, I go, where is he from? He's like, Saudi Arabia. I'm like, great, right? So, I go, so then the guy goes, I'm like, listen. The guy goes, the guy grabs my ear. Oh, and, hell, but there's man. like bounces and I go, get your hands off me. And I've been taking Krav Maga for what two weeks. What are you weeks. doing, the ISIS technique? I, so I'm like, ear. yeah, grab my ear. <laughs> but luckily it was not my cauliflower ear because yeah. then I would have flipped. <laughs> so then, then I go back outside and someone's like, these guys, they're getting guns or some crazy shit. So I just got in my car and drove home. I'm like, oh. fuck this. So hopefully these guys, so if, you, if, 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 if I'm dead uh, uh, in a couple of weeks, this, is, this story right here is, is, is the reason. So anyway, back to you, Jay. Okay, so, <laughs> oh, yeah, so yeah. then you end up, now your grades aren't good, right? Never. Your grades, now you're a smart guy. Yeah, I just didn't like school. Didn't like school. So any kids listening out there, don't, you know, stick to the books. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know. I just wasn't into it. So you ended up going to Nassau Community I had College, a right? Nice, I had a big time, uh, you know, I used to fantasize a lot. <laughs> Fan about chicks or something? Or? Every, every oh, you were daydream in school. Yeah, daydream. Yeah. So, but now, are, are, are colleges recruiting you? I would think yeah. that, yeah. No, no. I mean, the thing is, I mean, I wasn't into school, but I loved wrestling. So, you know, once I had a, the semester would come up, I would have to pass classes. I would make it a point again to do it. So again, it goes back to, you know, being in sports helped me get through a lot of things in my life too. As school being, you know, one of them. You know, I wouldn't have graduated high school without having to pass classes to be on the wrestling team. Right. You know, just like college, I made it a point to when I had to get to the books, I had to. But yeah, of course, I was just never really into it. You know, I was into it for for sports. Of course. Well, yeah. That's I. I used to spend my days in school like writing down wrestling moves, and yeah, my teacher would come over and be like, yeah. uh, "This is not what you uh, <laughs> you're supposed to be," I, or, or I, like drawing little wrestlers. That's what yeah. I would do. Was, so, so, but now you end up going to Nassau after. I went. My coach wanted me to get out of New York because, again, you know, I was getting in trouble. Now, were you in it? Were gangs or like? I'm, I would uh, think the gangs nah. would play like, "Hey, you're our nah, guy." It was never a gang in, in gangs. I was always. I had friends, but you know, I. I mean, once again, I, I got into wrestling because I was getting picked on. And the day I got into wrestling, that was the last day anybody picked on me. Once I learned a couple moves, and I was, you know, you know, I was it was over. Right. Nobody ever again was gonna mess with me. You know, so I learned a little bit how to protect. I actually got into boxing before wrestling. I went with uh, my sister's ex boyfriend. Well, my sister's boyfriend at the time, he would uh, he was you know doing some karate and he, he went to a boxing. Is it a white guy? Bay. White guy. So he probably did he Westbury. take you for like for like like <laughs> street cred? You're like, hey. I don't know. I don't. I, it was in Westbury. I remember that. And and um, uh, of course, you know, they ended up breaking up down the road, and then I didn't have a. T- you know chance to go back to the gym it was far away so that's why i picked wrestling it was at my high school it was free and i was like hey i could just learn this if somebody's you know grabbing me or trying to you know take my shoes or my money i could at least know how to slam somebody yeah, yeah. and get them off of me so that's originally why i joined wrestling not knowing the whole i i mean i saw a vision quest but i wasn't like knew the whole you know um point system or how it worked or anything i just yeah my first day i put a kid in like a uh a, like a boston crab and and, and, and the, the coach was like you can't, I, I swear to god i thought i thought all the moves were the same it was the same moves yeah and then uh and then actually i was in sixth grade wrestling and then they were like hey we're bringing some freight port kids over and then this kid akil code oh, yeah. came and put me in a, a cradle that gave me a red mark on my forehead for like a month. It was like a reminder of not to get put in that cradle. Oh but man, yeah, I know a kill. He was a tough kid, kid right? Yeah, uh, a lot of tough kids come out of there. Yeah, absolutely. So okay, so then, so then you end up going. Uh, uh, you wanted to get out of uh, New York. So where you? Oh uh, yeah, my coach was like, you know what? Let's. Uh, he called me Jimmy. All right, Jimmy. Um, yeah, you're graduating. You got a. You get a. You don't have the grades to go to a university, but. You go to uh, junior college, you know, get your degree and then transfer over to the university. And, you know, at the time, Iowa was 
you know, Hawkeyes. It was right after the Brands Brothers and all yeah. that. A few years after that, Tom Ryan and all those guys. And he's like, Jimmy, we're going to send you to Iowa Central Junior College. It's in Fort Dodge, Iowa. Oh, and then you go up to Iowa University or the Hawkeyes. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Man, I get out there. I was like, where the hell am I? It was like. All cornfields. All cornfields. They hated me. I'm a Yankee. I'm straight out of New York. I mean, I didn't even, I've never been anywhere other That's than hilarious. like wrestling tournaments. <laughs> so, I've never lived anywhere. So they're just like, nobody, you know, is really like, like, what's up with this guy? You know what I mean? And um, I just, you know, I was doing on the mat wrestling in the room. I was killing it, dude. I mean, you know, I would. They must I have was, loved you. The coaches must have loved you. Uh, yeah, but I think they still had that Iowa mentality. You know what I mean? I was more slick and, you know, I probably you know didn't have to train as hard as the other guys that were grinders so i don't know if they you know what i mean i, I think they like that grind style more but you know again i was still you know beating everybody up in the room and um i actually was whooping the kid that ended up winning the nationals that year the junior college nationals wow yeah i think his name was ironside or something yeah mike yeah. ironside i think mike ironside whatever his name was he was good but i i, I was you know i was definitely beating them up in practice and the end of the semester was coming I just was having I just you know I wasn't feeling it out there at all I was just homesick I any, was, any chicks were you banging any hot Iowa girls yeah but still it was just <laughs> nah, I don't know it, it wasn't my cup of tea out there man I was just like nah it was cool you so know you lasted yeah. one semester and- one semester I came back and um transferred back to Nassau Community College which for me was was incredible by the way if you guys don't know Nassau Community College is has the best sports teams because it's every great athlete in Long Island who was too dumb to get into college (laughs) or 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 or, or just like Jay like failed that after one semester of you know northern Iowa And, and then also the hottest women because it was every girl that like was a princess who never had to try hard in school, uh, who was just popular as shit, but actually forgot to actually learn anything to read a book. It, it was like you, you, the hottest women. They all came right from the club at night. Oh, yeah. They were, I mean, like ten in the morning was when they were leaving the city club. They had, they, they still had glitter on their faces, and, and they all wear like. These little shorts with the juicy uh, uh, on the asses and, yeah. and or like sweatpants. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah Nassau is, is nice. I don't know about it anymore, but it was nice when I went. So you went to yeah. Nassau and it, you went to Nassau. Nassau. Yo, the coaches again. You know, these are my coaches that. You know, I needed a kick in my butt. I needed you know somebody to be on me. You know, I didn't. You know, that that's who I meshed with better. A coach like that, where you know, come on, you know, be on your stuff. You know, always trying to push me. And I came back and boom, I fell in. The, that's what I had at, at NASA was Coach Hanky. You know, he reminds me of Mickey from Rocky. Right, right, right. Okay. So. <laughs> Get up because Hanky loves you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, man, he was great. You know, he was just pushing me and, and, you know, you know, telling me, you know, great things every day. You know, you could do this. You know, stay on your grade. You're going to go to the, you know, you're going to go D1 and now, all this that stuff. Was Baroni on team too? Baroni was on the team too. Yeah. So both of us knuckleheads were on the team. We ended that up was, fighting one year. Really? Yeah. Upstate. <laughs> What do you mean? You got him got to a fight? Yeah, we got in a fight at a tour. We went up to a wrestling tournament in Albany, dead midwinter. I mean, January, February, snow like two, three feet of snow. So me and him again, I forget the whole reason why. I remember I had Timberlands on and I was trying to kick. He was already boxing too at the time. He was doing right. the tough mans and all that. Right. So I was like, yeah, he got some hands, but. You know, I, 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 I Who won just, the fight? Well, we ended up stu- uh, scuffling a little bit. I like mean, on the bus or in the? No, in the- we were in the tournament about in the weigh-ins or something. And you guys I were mean, teammates. We were teammates. Yeah, we. You know, Brony's yeah. a knucklehead. I was a knucklehead at the time. I mean, we just. I don't remember about everything. All I remember is, I mean, I know I had a chair in my hand. I remember he had a chair. We trying to swing chairs at each other, and uh, coach finally comes in. He's like, "All right, you guys want to fight?" Find your own way home. <laughs> Me and him look out at each other. We look outside. We see that three feet of snow. Hey, coach, we're good. <laughs> we're good, bro. We made up real quick. That see is that hilarious. snow outside. I so, mean, yeah. I mean, Baroni was like, he has so many stories about how oh, he was a, a male stripper for the yeah, for the for some shot. kind of black dance He used team. to bring in the boxing gloves 
and have all the wrestlers box after practice in Nassau and Hofstra because we went to Hofstra too together. I mean, it was hilarious. So then you go to Hofstra, you get into Hofstra, and yeah. I remember, I think I, I would have been on your team too because Mike Quaglio yeah. gave me uh, my, my tour, and yeah. he was like, and Tom Ryan recruited me. Yeah. So Tom, at the time, Tom was cleaning house. He was like, yeah. because the team wasn't that good at that, at that time. It was like a bunch yeah. of, I actually went to a wrestling camp and took down a couple of the, high, the college kids on Damn. the team at, in high school, yeah, and Tom right. was like, I think gave me a scholarship on the spot. He's like, all right, get these, I think this kid starts for us. So, oh. <laughs> so you go to Hofstra. I went to, I ended up winning the, the Nassau community, uh, the Nassau, I won the Nationals. So you won that the, year. The, the community well, college Nationals. Yeah, the good. first one. Yeah, real good. Because like, again, like we spoke about, oh, it's all the great uh, wrestlers or, through high school that didn't have the grades to go Division One, So they all go to, to junior college so they could skip D3, D2. And yeah. Go, yeah. After they graduate, they go straight to D1. Yeah. Well, that was my road anyway. So, yeah, I won the Nationals. Got recruited by um, Hofstra. You know, still a knucklehead. You know, still living at home in Freeport. No, I was living on campus. I right, had right. full full ride to Hofstra. I had a you know low room. I had a room off at off campus at apartment with a girl at the time too, oh, and my room at Hofstra. So I would go back and forth, <laughs> living the dream. Um, and um, yeah, I did. Uh, you know, I was messing around that season. I, I felt I could have. I probably could have, you know, won it that year, but I was messing around. What do you mean, like, was smoking weed? Yeah, smoking weed, just, you know, school, just didn't. You weren't doing coke or No, no. I never did coke. So you weren't I sold doing. coke. You, you, <laughs> now, were you selling coke at Hofstra? Uh, maybe a little bit, not okay, as much as. Okay, so you, you were selling yeah. drugs, even yeah, though you had a full ride. Drugs. You yeah. still needed money. Yeah, I still needed money. So you're selling drugs on the side. Don't and, don't follow my path, kids. Right. And now is is Baroni selling it with you? Is he? No, selling? no, no, no. Oh, okay, I was so, I was uh, selling Baroni weed. Okay, so he always gets me out of me. He's like, you sold me some weed one time and then smoked it with me. <laughs> That's a, so you sell film. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, he, I mean, he was your friend. Yeah, I mean, you know, I got to try it out with you, right. for sure. And, and, but and, I got to get paid. So, so, okay, so you're in Hofstra. You're one of the best kids on the team. Yeah. Uh, it's you. Now, is this is before uh, Weidman came, right? Yeah, before Weidman came, before uh, a few other he, guys. There's a guy, Weidler, I think, on the team. Weidler, yeah. He he went MMA, too. He was fought MMA, too. He was tough as nails, but he was, you know. He's Smaller. a meathead. Yeah, meathead. So okay, so you're selling drugs, and so and you get at that point you got kicked out of Hofstra, right? Yeah, I, uh, you know, again I was a knucklehead. This is that that season. I ended up doing okay. I lost to John Lange in the, uh, in the wrestlebacks of the Nationals, which was going to be my place around. Right. Which I already beat the kid that ended up coming back taking third. I beat him in the quarterfinals. Wow. So I mean, you so know, I was right, right there. there. Yeah, the next season I was ranked third. In the country, D1, being a knucklehead, smoking weed, and got popped on the piss test, which at the time... For marijuana, which is for so marijuana, stupid because... And they had a new rule set in place saying if you get test, you know, positive for drugs, you're off. And it was a school, it was the school, um, you know, new rule. It wasn't the NCAA. Like, if it was NCAA, I would have had a couple months suspension and been back. Right. And for me, it was like, all right, now, okay, now this is getting my shit together. Now this is my last year wrestling. I know I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go 100. percent I don't, I don't know. I think I always need that kick in my butt or some type of reality to set in, which isn't good. But I needed that at the time, and I was like, all right, I'm taking it serious. And you know, whatever, with however the cards got dealt, they didn't let me back on the team. They were like, you uh, know what? Uh, now Tom Ryan could have had your back. I remember. I actually, think so. I, I asked I Tom think, about it. He said that's yeah. the one thing he feels really bad about. Yeah, I mean, so he said he, he said he was brand new. He was brand new. He didn't go to bat for me. I get it. You know what? Everything in your life happens for a reason, and that's what it is. So that, at that point, now you're kicked out of school. I was kicked out of school. No, 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 no. They actually did say I could finish up my school and my scholarship, but me being me at the time and being so like sour over the whole situation i was i didn't want to go to school i'm not gonna go to school to wrestle yeah, I'm not, i I'm can't wrestle, wrestle. Yeah, yeah, yeah i mean i got what am i doing here anyway i'm here to wrestle i didn't have any really plans to do anything and how after old are you school. now you're 20 yeah 19 19 20, years young, old yeah young, yeah young knucklehead man and um uh ended up picking up my wrestling shoes i remember this like it was yesterday and throwing them in the garbage and never in my headgear and everything i had like my practice stuff and never even thinking about it again. Uh, like, I dated girls then. They didn't even know how the level of wrestling I was on. Like, when yeah, I would tell like them. Yeah, you third in the country. Know, yeah, and they would, I would tell them. They had no idea just because I didn't talk about it at all. I just 
voided it out of my life, you know, then, you know, it's not, it just happens, you know, but I, I still feel everything you do, you know, Okay, so, so, now, so, then, so then what happens? Uh, you know, that's when um the Tony Montana. <laughs> no, that's when I got him. You know, I was like, you know what, time to make money. But so, so then you walk into Saralongo or no? Uh, oh, no, it was a you know a little time went by. I started making money, and then I uh how Phil, you, how Phil, you, Phil Phil Baroni. How how, called, how were you making money? You were selling drugs? Yeah, selling drugs, man. Selling it was drugs, all about money at the time. You were living I in Hempstead. I felt like seriously, which is the wrong way of thinking. I felt like I wasted my time wrestling. You know why? Because it felt like, you know, it's not like it is now where wrestlers in high school or, or junior high or something have something to think about after college or career at with time, fighting. Was, at the time, there was no MMA. Yeah, there was Olympics after. There was MMA, but it was still brand new. Right. I mean, you're talking about 2002, you know what I mean? So, what, so okay, so now ago. you're dealing drugs. Are you, are you, are you dealing yeah. it to like... Are you dealing it to like shady people back at the in the neighborhood? Are you dealing it to dumb college kids? Or? Shady, shady people. I really, you know, I you know what I mean. Everybody, no. anybody. Yeah, Anyone I mean, knows that Jay has Jay has the coke. Yeah. Jay has the weed. No, no heroin or no. You were no, 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 no. It was just uh, weed and coke. Yeah, now, weed and coke. But you're making good money at this. Yeah, I was doing really well. So you're making like three, four thousand a week. Yeah, more than that. Now. Five thousand. Now, yeah, now, were you saving any of it? Yeah, I was. I was. Decently smart. I mean, I always had a, you know, I always had a... A good business sense? Yeah. And I always would spend money too. But, but you know, I always, I was, you know what? I always knew it could end. So I was like, you know what? Let me just have money. So you weren't driving around a Ferrari and uh, like a, a fur coat or like... Yeah, I did dumb things. I was driving around really? convertible BMWs and dumb shit like that, of course. Convertible I still, BMWs? I still love cars, man. Okay, Come on. Right, it's a good point. So you got a convertible... Yeah. I had a convertible BMW at the time. I had a Mercedes Benz. Uh, you know, I had motorcycles. I had four wheelers. I had jet yeah, skis. No, are, are, people no, no, are you a known drug dealer at this point? Are people like... Are you, well, are you moving the up circle, the ranks of, of yeah, drug dealing? I mean... Yeah, plus I could defend myself. Right. Come on, So man. just don't fuck with it. Did anybody yeah, ever try on. to come at you? Uh, yeah, a few times. I mean, in that stage of my life, too, I was, I didn't care. I was street fighting. I was, you know, I, I you know what I mean? I took more of what i known from my competition and, you know what I mean, and wrestling. Because literally in a street fight, I mean, if you could wrestle, you got an upper hand. Right, I mean, right, right. Because not everybody knows how to box or throw punches. You know what I mean? Right. There's... Ninety nine percent of people do not know how to fight. You know, of course. Now, okay. Now you take it to the street. There's nothing's. There's no rules. Yeah, you get stabbed. You get shot. But Did I you mean, ever get stabbed or shot? I got shot at. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I got shot at before in in a long time ago. A few times. So now Phil Baroni is the guy that that saved you from all this. This. this yeah. This. If you want to. Yeah. I mean, da damn okay. sure right, dude. <laughs> okay. So Phil Baroni. All right. So at the time. So I'm doing all this stuff at the time. You know, doing my thing and making money. And uh, Phil reaches out to me. Hey, man, I'm fighting in the UFC. Um, I knew he was doing tough, tough, tough enough fights. I didn't. You know, I yeah. seen UFC. It wasn't as big. And he's like, man, I need. Uh, I'm fighting. Um, who is he fighting? I think he was fighting Matt Lindlin first Matt fight. Matt Lindlin, yeah, yeah. And he's like, dude, I need a good wrestler to, you know, take me down. And because Lindlin you know, was an Olympic wrestler. Yeah, Lindlin was a Lindlin was an Olympic wrestler, and he's like, I need a good wrestler to take me down, and I need to defend takedowns. And um, uh, so I don't know, I don't know, I didn't want to wrestle anymore. I'm like, well, I'm gonna go wrestle and get ringworm and get sweaty and sweaty dude on me, and I'm like, what the hell. I'm I'm about I want a mink coat and drive a convertible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get <laughs> at the time, of, you get Long Island. Yeah, man. Like so, uh, um, what ha I mean, I ended up yeah going down and and wrestling with him and and we did a little boxing. I now, remember. where was this? Belmore Kickboxing Academy. That's where I started at. Shout out Keith Trimble, He's still there, badass coach, one of the best in Long Island. Um, so. Uh, that's where he took me down, and and you know he convinces Keith to let me box. You know Baroni's a knucklehead. He's and I, and I went in the box somebody that knew how to box. So this is after we doing some um, some um, wrestling stuff, and um, I put the gloves on. And you know I was always thought I was tough. I was like, yeah, I got, this dude looked like a nerd, like straight up substitute teacher. Yeah, the guy was supposed gonna box i'm like yeah i'm gonna smash this dude i had a you know i was super confident i was beating people up in street fights i'm like yeah let's go this dude had a bird chest and he took off his glasses and got in the ring i'm like yeah let's go boom straight 
jabbing my nose off my face, bro. I left with my nose bloody. I'm like, whoa. But you never, the, but you never even really trained I never, boxing. Yeah, I never. I did a little bit of boxing again before wrestling, but not right. like that. You know what I mean? And I was like, damn. So anyway, long story short, you know, I finished the round, whatever. I was tough and all that, but I wasn't. Like, I wasn't that gun ho about, you know, going back to me yeah, to be yeah. a fighter. So, long story short, a time goes on by, and then I ended up getting locked up. Ended up getting arrested for, of course, selling drugs, which is one you, of the best you, things that happened in my life. Did you get set up, or? I got set up for a guy I knew 10 years. So, you know, if you're doing dirt out there, just believe it. I don't care if you James Bond, shit comes back to what you. What were you selling? Coke. Sell, you were selling Coke. How I was much selling Coke. Coke uh, oh, dude, I don't know the numbers, but I ain't gonna go into all that. It, right, was, right. it was big. It was big. It was a pretty big deal. And then big deal. It was big enough to get an A two felony, which A two nonviolent felony, which the only one above that is an A one nonviolent. Okay, so if you go down the list, there's A one felony, A two felony. I had an A two nonviolent. So then you have the A one not violence, A two nonviolent. Of course, mine was drug, so it was nonviolent. So boom. You know, I'm in the, you, you in the game with that charge. You yeah. know, I went to my lawyer at the time. Thank God, I, like I said earlier, I've been, you know, I wasn't always a retarded person and spent all my money. I would always have something so you had a good, on the you, side. You had a pretty good lawyer. Had a pretty good lawyer, and he told me straight. He's like, yeah, you're in the game now, buddy. You got some money, huh? <laughs> Basically, I'm not touching your case without some money. So like I had 50 a, grand? Yeah, around, you wow. know. But I didn't have to give him all that for, up front. So anyway... Now, did you have to spend any time behind bars? Well, I, I, when I got locked up, I was in there a month. My mom put up the house, bailed me out, and then I started fighting my case from there. But I mean, dude, uh, again, my story, I, I, it made me who I am today, man. Yeah, I, yeah. Mean, I mean, listen. How, but I mean, when you see your mom put up her house. My mom put up a house, I mean, man. I mean, are you, are, you know, are you in tears? I mean, how bad do you dude, feel? It hurts, man. I mean, you know, that's your mother. Yeah. You know, and, and she still didn't like, you know, she still wasn't hard enough on me to be like, you know, you're a piece of shit. She just, you know, she you could Was tell. Was she thinking about giving you back to the adoption agency at that point? <laughs> nah, I don't think she would do that, but yeah, imagine. <laughs> yeah, calling up, hey, you know, you know I know I had him for 20 some more years, but come get this guy. I picked, I made a mistake. I don't care if he could wrestle. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, that that was all life-changing experience. I wouldn't change it for the world, and I hope, so you know. So your lawyer gets you off. <laughs> Well, yeah, I started fighting the case. It was in a month. Bail out. Mom put the house up, which is, you know, you know, I mean, that's her house, dude. You know, your mom put your house up but for you. But you're guilty. How if do you, you, you don't change case? your fucking ways, if your mother puts up your house for you, you just a damn, you are a piece of shit. But how do you beat the case if you're, if you're guilty? Okay, so it's my first, uh, it's my first felony. Yeah. You know, it's my first time being in big trouble. I had small stuff, misdemeanors, fights. Again, we going back, but nothing like this, you right. know, this magnitude. So... You know, again, it goes back in my life with my, you know, again, for me, I always need that kick in my butt. So I'm like, you know, sitting in jail those for those days, like, man, this this shit is definitely not worth it. Yeah. And, you know, this lion right here is not meant to be caged and all them feelings I've had. And, and of course, I'm not no snitch, so I'm not going to set somebody else up like the guy that set me up because he wanted to get out but of trouble. was that what they were trying to make you do? Yeah, well, well first, they knew already. They brought me in right away and said, you know, what's up? You got anything for us? Nope. Take me, you know, take me to, you know, what do, you, do what you got to do. My, my dad and got my lawyer. Of drugs, and he, he had turned in a field of, of marijuana that he drove past and got out, actually. <laughs> Damn. Selling acid. And my lawyer actually is is a lawyer that he don't make deals. So if you have this lawyer, there, you know, if you already know, he don't, you know, he don't come with deals. He gets you right. the best scenario that could happen, but he don't do any deals or set anybody up or anything like that. So, um, yeah, long story short, um, we, uh, I bail out, my mom's bailed me out, and then, you know, I start, that's when, you know, the everything sets in so now reality, you're like, All right, depression. Now, now are, the, are the people, are your old clients and your, the guys, are they trying to get you back in the drug game? Are they trying to, hey, listen. Uh, you know. Yeah, you know, there was, a, I'm not going to lie, there was a few moves I had to make after being out on bail, like, you know, people owe me money and stuff I had to sell because I was still sitting on things and just, but 
I already had in my mind I was done. Did you, you sell know? your your like stock in like your in like your drug business? I mean, was yeah, it, it was done. really. Yeah, no, Just, I didn't sell what I had. But like, yeah. I mean, like someone bought you out. Like, hey, I'll take over your clientele. For yeah, you. yeah, something like that. <laughs> like, yeah, situations like that. I had to you know meet do some meetings with stuff and you know unload stuff i had and and just you know now everything i've had it's like you know anything worth value had to get rid of just to have some money for lawyers and whatever you know any anything else just to live because yeah. the next few years i didn't you know what i mean it's living off of stuff i had i didn't have a job and um yeah that's when everything kicks in reality depression what do i do now oh i'm facing jail time too you know what i mean so this is a court is the the case was going on now are you time. thinking back then like man i was second in the state i fucking i had all this i had I, are you thinking a what little bit you know just it could have been different i could have stayed in school you know even a nine to five is better than being in jail i'll tell you that yeah you know unless you like being confined i don't so so how long were you actually in the jail for just like a month and change you did know anybody I mean? like test you in jail no bro come on no no it's it's different man you carry you know it's, you, you, they, you, they prey on the weak you don't have to join a gang or anything no Come on, dude. I carry myself a certain way. Nobody's just going to run up on me. And, yeah, yeah. You know, you know you could do that too. And that's what it is. It's like anything in life. You know who you could prey on and all that. Not that I'm not the one. So, you know, I didn't have to. That. I, knew, I knew a few dudes in there too. So, you know what I mean? It's not, it's right. not like I didn't know anybody. But so, yeah, I'm out and just going through all that stuff. And, you know, um, um, you know, I'm just praying and just wanting another chance. I don't want to go. And this is when... All those feelings set in depression and all this. Now, what do I do? And the only thing, because now I'm getting ready, my mind frame is okay, I got, I, you know, I might go to jail. You know what right. I mean? There's a possibility, a big possibility, unless I get, they get me probation, which my lawyer was like, yeah, I doubt it, but the, the, I'll try to get you about eight months. So I'm now I'm like, all right, I got to get in shape. You know what I mean? So that was my way of thinking. So you got in shape just for, to prepare for jail? Yes, that's wow. how. So I call Phil up, boom. Yo, listen, we're, I got to go back to that gym. I got to get ready, you know, before I'm dealing with this case and all that. And and that's what was my mind frame going back to Belmore Kickboxing was getting prepared to go to jail. So now, now you go to that, that Belmore Kickboxing, you're actually beating the fighters probably. Not yet. I still, I went back and I was just hitting the bag every day and doing my own thing. I just signed up at the gym. So to, who says to you, hey, you want to fight or anybody like? Uh, not not yet. It was a few months went by. Keith just looking at me on the side of his eye, not really paying attention to me. And, you know, that was rare. That was new to me, too. I always had coaches running on, hey, man, blah, blah, blah. So this was all new. Yeah. I mean, this guy wasn't even paying me no mind. You know, he was just looking at me inside, like from the side of his eye, whatever. You know, who's this kid? Whatever. He knew I was tough, but, you know, he still wasn't like jumping at, hey, yeah. man, I want to train you. And then all of a sudden one day. I don't know how it happened, but you know he was like he'll he'll train me, and that from that day, dude. It, no, no, no. I was look, I'm looking at your record. You, yeah. Now you win your first. You fight Keith Plate. Yep. Uh, that's that's your first fight. Minute and a half. Just knock yeah. the fucking guy out. When, was was uh went in that fight like I was a straight killer off the street. <laughs> Had all the homies in the crowd from Freeport. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I uh I sold the tickets because we had to sell the tickets or sell for the fight, and no, it was still brand new in MMA, so nobody knew what it was really. I would be going down in Freeport. Hey man, come watch me fight. The tickets are like twenty five bucks. And like, at this point, fight. you know you're not going to you're jail. You're a wrestler. Right? At, 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 like this point, you know you're you're off. Well, not yet. I'm still going through my case. So I still, so it's even more because now I found the love for this new sport uh, that I can incorporate wrestling. And I found a, you know, I always loved boxing and I could do boxing. And then I what, what's found that out one movie Muay Thai. Where the guy fights in prison and then like, which one? It, it was some stupidest, but I think it was a boxing movie, but like somehow. Oh, yeah, the back in the day. Uh, penitentiary, was it? It was something where like he fights in jail, but then. Yeah. For some reason, like everybody in the jail, like they have like ring card girls. I'm like, so fucking. <laughs> yeah, I need to make a movie they, like, like that. Man. It. I was like, how do I think this is what happens in jail? We're gonna we're gonna make the remake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay, so Keith Plate. Now, is Keith Plate any good? You know anything about him? I don't know anything about him. I, man, I was like, it's war. You know, if I could put the war paint on my face, you know what I mean? I could put war on my face. I mean, I was fighting. Even that, my mentality for fighting wasn't. Where when I became a real professional at it, and I had a better mind frame with it, I went in that fight like he smacked my mother in front of me. 
Now, did your mom come to the, the fight? No, no, no. She didn't come to the fight. She, but you know, they all. My mother was great. She, she believed in me wrestling and fighting. She would. I would call her the day before a fight, and oh, you're gonna squash him like a tomato. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I swear to you. I mean, who I can be? How can't you be confident if your mother's like, yeah, don't don't worry about That's it. That's a nice Italian woman, right? Yeah, there. yeah. You're gonna squash him like a tomato. So <laughs> your, your next fight is against Jermaine Johnson. Yep. Uh, you beat him in a minute, a minute rear naked choke. Yeah. Fernando Munoz, fucking uh -huh. 33 seconds. Yeah, I was, I mean, I was winning. I was running through them. Hot uh, night through now, I mean, by then, you know you're not going to jail by Fernando Munoz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was already. So what happened was with the whole situation with the jail, how it ended up is, you know, I started going back to my high school to get the coaches to sign letters for me saying I was a good dude, my personality, or yeah. you know, I made a mistake. I went to my college. My college coaches did that for me. A I lot of people. It. Uh, no, my my Nassau Community College. Oh, they you, 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 you didn't go to Iowa. No, nah, well, they didn't. We always nah, knew you were. Uh, no, trouble. so my Nassau coaches, my high school coaches, they they you know they like father figures to me, so they definitely were in my corner, you know. Um, um, and then you know I told myself that's it, I'm done messing around. You know what I mean? If I get this opportunity, you know, again, like I've had many opportunities in my life, and I kind of messed a, a lot of opportunities up, but I know how to rebound. When yeah, I yeah. do get a, a opportunity, I never look back from that. So then, so then you beat Fernando Munoz in a minute, and then you then you first round against Fabio Holanda. That's the first time you go to distance. Yeah, he, he so he he must have been tough. Then then you fight GSP. Yep. Uh, this is your your fifth fight ever. Yeah. <laughs> against GSP. Now, do you yeah. know how good GSP is? I do, you know what happened was I messed up because well again first off I was still green you know I just still didn't have the mentality of a of a you know. I still feel like I was amateur. I didn't have really any amateur fights. These all first fights were pro, but you know I still had an amateur mind frame. And even GSP fight, I went in with the wrong mind frame. I went in like you know it was war, you know without you know. Now thinking. were you training in Long Island still? I was training in Long Island, but I came out to help Phil for his fight, and that's how I ended up getting this fight. I still didn't have a manager. I was training with Phil in the UFC gym, the older UFC gym, and Dana White was looking at a spar on his office camera. Like who's this kid? You know, and then for some reason, uh, oh, yeah, Mayhem ended up getting locked up, that crazy son of a bitch. And he was supposed to fight GSP. So they had to cancel that fight. So, boom, you know what? So Dana, Dana White says to you, you want to fight GSP? Basically, yeah. Now, do you know anything about GSP? Well, this is the messed up thing. I, well, not messed up, but I trained with him at Henzo's gym in Long Island. And I was taking him down, and I'm like, Pfft. Well, this kid's badass what yeah <laughs> like you know what i mean i think it was bad for me because uh, in my mind i was like oh i'm gonna smash him i'm gonna take him down and you know pound him out if i have to but so yeah i mean but yeah what happened he caught me well, he caught and, you that's the first time you've ever been knocked out yep. no did no were you ever knocked out in sparring or tra training or i got knocked down in sparring before that yeah but not in yeah. a fight not in a fight, no. So in I mean, a, fight, a lot I was of times I talk to people, they're like, "Man, I didn't think I was. I didn't think anyone was gonna knock me out." Yeah. And then all of a sudden, human. I got man, knocked you're out. human, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hit anybody on the right spot, they go down. It doesn't matter who you are. But now, now, how hard do you take that loss? I took it hard, man. It was, it was. Uh, you know, I had to start back from ground zero, and I was, you know, it, there was two roads I could have took. I was, I was one, not for me. Let me do something else. So all right, now, you know, I gotta change my situation i gotta get out of my environment and just change stuff up in my life to get better and that's what i chose to do i chose to move to vegas. across to red to vegas at the time just to you know just to be engulfed in in so, MMA. so now you're at, you're at extreme couture 2005 now i heard legendary stories about you at extreme couture <laughs> i heard that you and pile would just oh, fuck man. everybody up at the <laughs> gym like like they said that like basically to be part of that team they had to get through you and Mike Pyle. Is that nah, it wasn't that bad. I mean, we were just guys that, you know, it's like any gym. It's like your house. Somebody comes in your house, they disrespect, and you're going to handle it, right, as a man. Yeah. That's what we did. The, we, I was that guy, too, you know, definitely. If you come in my house and disrespect me, okay, let's handle it. Who and there's the no better than to do it in a gym where you could put gloves on. There's no better place because now, it's all I, good. I, I heard one time, like, there's a famous story that Team Takedown came. Oh, yeah. And like didn't tell that you guys that like they were there. Randy forgot to tell you guys. So all of a sudden it's you, Pyle, I think Evan Dunham was yeah, there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a van pulls up 
and Johnny <laughs> Hendrix. Wow. Uh, they, CB, they, CB Dalloway. They make the story go crazy. CB Dalloway, uh, Ryan Bader. Yeah, nah. and, and they're just kind of... Team Takedown? What are you talking about? Uh, one time, I think they were the Team Takedown, right? Really? No. Nah. In Arizona. And no, just, no, no. That was uh, Hendrix. Uh, what's the bigger guy? A few other. It was all wrestlers. So it wasn't. all those guys were kind of like, and they didn't tell you guys they were there. So you're like, you thought your gym was being invaded yeah, by another I team. I don't remember it like that, but yeah. I mean, Johnny was just straight out of wrestling and coming off, you know, two-time national champ. So he had a confidence about him. And that was, you know, it wasn't like he disrespected the gym. You know, he just went hard, you know. That's that's the thing. There's, 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 there's something when you disrespect and then there's – people that go but I super Barone hard head kicked him yeah baroni ended up he was out yeah he was out cold yeah he was out definitely for sure but um yeah he came back strong look what he yeah, did he came back and won yeah the, yeah come the, on the title so it did yeah, yeah. it shaped his career yeah, right. i mean he it happens it's the, the fight thing. business guys i mean you know what some you could either again there's two rows after that you now, know now, now were you there when vitor belfort was in his um his uh steroid or whatever uh uh Whatever those guys, uh, the you know the human growth hormone, whatever the I have low TRT years. Were you there during? Yeah, his yeah, he was there. I don't know what he was doing with the situation with TRT, but yeah, he was there for years. You know. Um, well, it just seemed like when he was on TRT, he was like, he was like spinning kicking people and head kicking people, and <laughs> oh, and then was, off TRT, he's he's getting like sort of knocked out by grandmas and stuff. Is, yeah, is that? I don't, I don't know what he did and does does he at didn't his see him house. In the gym taking nah, he wasn't. Taking needles nah, and stuff. that wasn't done in the gym. Nah, uh, okay. yeah, but he trained there for years. Yeah, Randalay was there, uh, Belfort was there. I mean, we had everybody come through that gym. Who's the guy in the gym that came in and you were like, "This guy's going to be a world champion," and then just didn't for some reason make it happen? Uh, I know everyone says Mike Pyle in the gym is like a more of a boxer kid that that came more. He did, he was just a boxer. Because at the time Gil, Mart Gil Martinez was yeah. there, yeah. I mean, I'm not here to drop names, but but I'm just telling you, this kid was phenomenal. I seen him in front of me. What's his spar name? Spar. You can say Canelo it. Alvarez and beat up Canelo Alvarez in training. Who? I don't. I'm not. You know his it. name. You can I say forgot it. his name. Come I'm on, punchy. You can just say I'm it. punchy, bro. You can, just say, you can just say the guy's name. But that's the only guy I could think of. There was but, a guy that you saw beat up Canelo in the gym. Yeah, yeah. But that's the only guy I could think of that. And what happened? That, and you have I don't know. Sense? I haven't heard of him. I think he should be. I mean, he still could be boxing. I don't know. But oh, okay. that's the only guy I could think of. And then uh, I, I was telling a story how Engano gave me the tickets to the fight, and I was yeah. with you, and I had to leave. And the next thing I know, you're sitting next to Engano. <laughs> yeah. You're now training with Engano. Oh, he came in the gym the other day. Yeah, he's whew, he's a monster. Yeah, and you were holding pads for him? No, no, no. We're just drilling, just drilling. No sparring. They, you know, he asked me if I want to go round one. I said absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just drilling when I why know not? what's coming up. Yeah, why not? This dude is a monster. He looks straight out of the Predator movie. Uh, yeah, you think he's gonna beat Stipe? <laughs> I I don't know, dude. I mean, Stipe's good too. I'm excited to see the fight. I don't. I can't call it on that, but. You know, this guy's a monster. I think uh, Stipe definitely has more of well-rounded with wrestling and stuff. But uh, just to call a winner of that is, is you know, yeah. that's why I love the, this fight, you know, because I don't know. <laughs> no, no, it could be over with one punch by both, you know. Uh, so you lose to GSP, but then you come back. You beat Ronald Jun, Adam Lynn, Pat Healy, who's a fucking tough motherfucker. Oh, yeah, he's tough. I mean, was did you, yeah. uh, did you know how good Pat Healy was when you were fighting him? Yeah, I knew he was a tough guy. Um, yeah, I knew I was going in for... Uh, a guy that would never quit, and that was him, for sure. Then you beat. Then you lost to Jonathan Goulet. Yeah, which I was beating him, and I got kneed in the head, which is probably one of the bloody fight, bloodiest fights in the UFC. Yeah, oh, man. I made it all the way back and grinded, and you know, to be winning the fight and get kneed, and now I gotta, you know what I mean? Then you beat Ellenberger. Ellenberger. You beat a prime Ellenberger, lost to yeah. Chris Wilson. Ellenberger was undefeated at the time. I'm the first guy to beat him. Wow. Yeah. And Jake, Jake hits like, I mean, he hits really hard. Oh, yeah. He's a monster. Uh, yeah. Now, the, the, the Woodley fight, was that the hardest you've ever been hit? Uh, I don't know. I went to sleep. I don't know <laughs> if it's the hardest I've been hit. Uh, I, I think the hardest you've been hit is when you're still awake and you can feel it. Right. It's a good point. It's a good point. So, I mean, yeah, he hits hard. I mean, uh, I knew going in, he hits hard. You beat Mark Miller. You beat Chris Kennedy. I mean, you go out and you you just you're just beating these guys left and right. Uh, you know, you beat Jesse Taylor. Yeah, he was tough too. I remember that. Yeah. You beat a guy who blocked me on Twitter, Jason High. I don't know. He doesn't like me for really? some reason. Yeah. Oh, damn. Uh, I made a joke. He didn't like. I don't know. I, I don't even know the guy. He's a guy. Uh, Jesse Taylor's a tough dude. You beat Joe Riggs. 
Joe uh, Riggs tough too, yeah. I ta- like Joe Riggs. He I talks like about Joe your Riggs. penis, by the way. He, <laughs> yeah, he's nuts. He's uh, fucking nutty. I mean, you beat, uh, and then, then you beat Rick Hahn, who's a uh, Yeah, he was tough. When great I beat judoka. Him. He was undefeated when I beat him too. And you're a black belt in judo also, right? No, I'm not a judo. Uh, no, no, I just I just practice judo. Judo is great art to, to learn. I learned it because probably I started practicing more. Well, before Rick Hahn, I, was, uh, I loved the Uchimata throw. You know what I mean? I always was a throw in wrestling, like because I like freestyle. So I learned judo, and judo is, is great for MMA to transition into MMA. And um, actually, uh, I brought out to train with me for that fight was uh, Carol Parisian. Okay. Yeah, when I fought Rick Horn. So how how was how was training with Carol? Good. I always trained with him for years, man. He was. You know, he's a fucking riot, man. He makes me laugh. And then the Ben Askren fight, which I still think you won that fight. Um, it was I do a too. close fight. <laughs> uh, I, I think the biggest mistake you made was when you knocked him down and started celebrating. Nah, I was like, dude. I know. Uh, yeah. But I still think you won that fight. in the fight. moment, man. Uh, I, I still thought I was winning, so. Now, uh, now I, I happen to love Ben Askren. He's a, he's a, he's a good he's friend. He's tough, man. Yeah, he's Now, he's he awkward, says he doesn't wear awkward deodorant. Awkward as shit. Oh, yeah. I don't think he does either. Because yeah, I remember you calling stinky. him stinky. Man, he stunk. <laughs> His breath and everything in the wings. I'm like, dude, just talk that away. <laughs> well, now, that, that, that was a fight. I thought, I thought you got robbed in that fight. Yeah. And he says that actually people bring that, that fight up to uh, more than anybody. Wow. He says people are still always. I, if you look at him right after the fight, he thinks he lost before they announced it. And I think I won. I mean, you could see his demeanor. Probably the best thing that happened yeah. for his career was here at that fight because yeah. he realized how, how long he needed. You know, uh, Then the Ellenberger fight again, I thought it was a very close fight. I thought I won that fight too. I, I do too. I, I, I love you know Jake. What? But Whatever. Yeah. I like Jake too. Jake's a good dude. But, you know, I thought I won that fight. You know, no, was, it, was it hard to walk away from fighting? Uh,. Um, I don't know if it was hard. I just felt like I've been through everything and I've put, you know, 100% of myself in and that's all I could do at the time. And I didn't want to be jaded or have a bad vibe in my stomach about fighting. So I, I chose to walk away, which is very hard for any professional athlete to do. I, uh, you know, I, I don't regret it at all. I said to myself you know what when that fire burns out inside of me that's when i need to retire because you know they always ask me over the years oh how long are you gonna fight on when you gonna, you know and i just feel like guys hold on too long and i wasn't in a position financially to turn it down either i just went with my gut dude i wasn't walking away in the sunset all right i could do this now i could do that i got a little money no i was walking away that's another reason i'm like bro i'm you know i'm fighting ufc top five guys and i'm making nothing dude i looked at my check i'm like Pfft. I'm out of here. Making you my know? money dealing drugs in the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> in the 90s. Insane, too. Like, you know what I mean? It was terrible, dude. I mean, it's a position, you know, I was in. I kind of took a shit deal to get back to the UFC because I felt like I felt confident in myself at that point. I feel like I helped you out a little bit. Uh, but I, I got to say, because I kept tweeting and, 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 and tagging the, the, the Joe Silva and all the guys at Fertitas. I'm like, this dude's 11 or no in his last 11 fights. Yeah. Why is he not in the UFC? And then, well, no, I mean, I had other opportunities over the years to go back to UFC where I had better offers, like for Strike Force at the time, Affliction at the time. You know, they gave me signing bonuses. I made money, you know, decent money for, for making a living wise. I didn't make the monies that, you know, now, like Conor McGregor's or, yeah. you know, other guys made millions of dollars. No, but I made a living. You know, that's all I had to do. So where certain guys have to work, you know. So I did okay. You know, I, I made some paydays. I made some fight bonuses, signing bonuses, sponsors at the time, you know. So I was doing okay. I bought my first house in um, 2008, 2007 or whenever it was. 2006, sorry. You know, all fighting. I mean, you know, so, so uh but um, yeah. When when it was all said and done, though, I didn't. I mean, you know, of course, I didn't. You know, save money. I was spending it like, you know, I signed a bonus. Okay, that's a new car. Well, well, I'm telling <laughs> oh, you, I need man. that watch right there, that Rolex. You know what I mean? But yeah. Well, I mean, you, you know, we live all make too. dumb. Yeah, we. Yeah, but whatever. That's all. Well, since here then, since you stepped away, you know, you doing stunts and stuff. Yeah. I'm, well, acting, acting, stunts, and I'm doing my own I think stunts. you started off in stunts, and yeah. all of a sudden, like. You are fucking killing the game. I, I've uh, seen you in you're blessing, man. I, I man, <laughs> I, I've seen you in every Marvel. Luke yeah. Cage, 
Uh, you were in uh, Iron Fist, right? Yeah, Iron Fist. Daredevil. Um, Daredevil. Now you Luke always Cage. lose in these fights. I always it's lose. always in a jail scene. It's okay. Too. Like, like. Yeah. You're always it's, in a jail, it's, 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 and you start. Stereo, I'm stereotype, man. Guess what? I don't care. Stereotype me. I'm henchman, bad guy. One day I'll get a good guy role, but I don't. I don't mind, dude. It's all good. Uh, no, you're, you know, but you're killing it. You're on like all kinds of movies and TV. Yeah, they give you I, I actually got a great one coming out. I'm so what happy you got and out? blessed. Uh, Equalizer Part Two. Nice. Yeah, I got a nice part with Denzel Washington, which is one of my favorite actors. And it's you got to do a scene with him. A scene with Denzel. Wow. I got a big scene with him. It's it's incredible. I'm happy to be a part of it, and you know that's gonna. I can't wait till it comes out. It's now, awesome. now, when you're on set, are the actors are they kind of like asking you about your fights and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Everybody is always respectful and and always into it. You know, it's, again, UFC and and MMA is one of the biggest you know fight fighting now, and, and you know it's bigger than boxing so you know everybody's always interested and and they give me a certain respect actually but you start at the bottom I mean, oh, I started, started on the bottom, man. You I'm started still, the bottom. Yeah, I, yeah. I had to when I retired from fighting, dude. Listen, when I retired, my last fight, Tyrone Woodley, I was, you know, I mean, I'm looking at my bank account and I'm like, dude, should I take one more fight just to get, you know, some money together? And I'm dealing with IRS problems. I mean, and you know, when the shit hits the fan, it hits the fan because that's when everything started coming. I I got audited. When I'm after my last fight, I'm getting audited now. Really, from the last three years of fighting, I'm getting audited. So I was dealing with a lot, you know. And I just like, listen, I can't just fight for money. You know, I got to be into it because I've never one thing. I had 30 fights. I had wins. I had losses, you know, but I, there's not one fight I went in and, and gave up. You know, I fought every fight and I trained for every single fight. You know, yeah, maybe I overtrained or did, but I bust my ass every single fight and I never gave up any fight. So if I lost, you know, I just, it was the better man that night that I lost to. But every single fight I fought with my heart. I never fought for money or anything else. So I'm, you know, I, I kind of, um, you know, that's how I, I wanted to go out. You know, I wanted to go out when that fire kind of went still out. Saying you started at the bottom though. Started at the bottom. So I'm, I'm retired and now what am I doing and you know, I'm like, man, let's let's try this movie thing and see. Well, I actually I already have been in the movie stuff since you know 2007, six, where Randy introduced me to a guy in New York, Johnny C, Johnny Santiempo, which kind of mentored me in the game and and showed me the ropes. And you know, I kind of ran with it from there. I'm like, ah, you know, maybe I could do it. I mean, I wasn't that into it at first, but you know, just seeing how much work went involved to it and and seeing, okay. Um, you know, my first audition I went on, I'm like, yeah, I could do this. I, I fight in front of 20,000 people. I fight on pay-per-view. That's easy. Give me that. Yeah. They gave me the, the script of the sides, and I'm reading. I'm like, uh, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Johnny said, uh, so basically, homie the clown came out the yeah, back yeah, door, yeah. hit me over there, like, get in that. What are yeah. you doing? Get out of here. So I had to, I was like, oh, shit, I really have to learn. Yeah. You know, there's, there's you know, a craft to this. Mm -hmm. And even film fighting, there's a craft to it. It's, I'm punching for camera, not just to hurt somebody. So it's totally different from fighting, you know? Do any guys sometimes try to be tough guys and hurt you at all? Or? Yeah, nah. I, I remember Barnett was saying that, like, a little bit, Steven not Seagal really, though. Yeah, probably. nah, I haven't run into a Steven Seagal. I mean, nah, at all. You know what? It's, it's again, how, 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 again, how, how, most Luke people Cage, respect her. Cool? Luke Cage is awesome. The, what about Iron the, Fist? The, it was the chick, right? The you chick, both? super cool, oh, very, how, how very she? hard worker. She definitely, she spent, we spent a week rehearsing the fight, and she was there eight hours a day rehearsing the fight with me and wow. she wanted to be she wanted to get it perfect and i respect that you know because i come from fighting where we train hours a day trying to you know do everything we can to have our technique sharp and she wanted to her everything for her to look real and sharp and she right. spent all the time on it so i respect that she was great um yeah everybody's cool again i come in and they know i'm a real fighter and you know and I was on the level of of the fighting I was, and and they respect that, and it's nothing they 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 respect that. They think it's cool that I'm there <laughs> on set with them. You know what else I respect? I respect Juegobox.com. You got to check it out, people. Juegobox.com. Everyone's did all the standard gift items for the holidays: clothes, cologne, a nice bottle of liquor. We've all done it, but we got something different. And much better than any of those this holiday season. If you want to return a gift, if you actually like don't like your gift, if the person you bought a gift for is like, what are you getting me? Listen, you put hot sauce on everything? If so, it's time to check out Fuego Box, a hot sauce club that delivers boxes of small batch and gourmet hot sauces right to your doorstep. 
They focus on flavor over heat and always avoid gimmicky selections. I hate gimmicky selections when it comes to hot sauce. Think of it as a hot, cloth, hot sauce club for people who love food. For purchase, go to FuegoBox.com and use code GASTRO for $10 off your first box. That's FuegoBox.com, promo code GASTRO for $10 off and for the best hot sauces you've probably never heard of. So uh, that's awesome that you're doing this, man. Uh, but no, I, we do have to find, uh, talk to you about probably the most impressive thing. It's not you coming second in state and fighting all these people and beating Pat Healy and beating Jason High and beating uh, Ellenberger and, and Rick Hahn. Your girlfriend. <laughs> Your girlfriend. Oh, wow. Okay, so this girl comes to my show. Uh, actually, I think first time I met her, I forgot where we were watching a fight together, yeah. and I meet her, and I'm like, oh, oh, and she's like, hi, I'm, I'm Jake's girlfriend. I, I'm Jake's girlfriend. I'm like, oh, uh, so what do you, uh, what do you do? She goes, I'm a butt model. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I thought she was joking. <laughs> and then I, I go and uh, I have her take a picture of me and you. Yeah, and, and then I look back, and she has the six million followers. I'm like, the, like that's the story of my life. No, is I, I have her take a one point four, one point four million. Like yeah. I have like ten thousand. I think you have like uh, four hundred. Okay, I fought blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, oh, but this that. girl, this girl is the hottest chick I've ever. I mean, aside from my wife, she <laughs> is the hottest chick I've ever seen. Her ass is like. Yeah. I, I thought she had a fake ass. No, it's all real. She, she, she's, it's all real. Yeah. Now, I have to say, like, that, when she came to my show, she didn't dress like she does on Instagram. Yeah. She doesn't yeah, go she out did. wearing, like, the yeah, things she, she wears. She gets paid for that on there. Does she go out with you? Does she wear those hot outfits? Yeah, she'll, she'll wear some sexy stuff. Yeah, now, definitely. Now, are guys constantly making comments to her and you? Uh... Not, not really. When I'm there with her, like right around, her. like of course, if she'll go like to the bathroom by herself or you know get something to drink at the bar, and a guy doesn't know she's with me. But I mean, you know, that's my job to train my woman, babe. Make sure that you know nothing, you know that they know right off the bat you're with somebody or you know I'm here. So, because when I come over there, there's no more talking if they're being disrespect right, disrespectful. Right, right. So I mean, pretty much, she's like, no. What about you know, the comments on her page? Or the, yeah, like, I don't. I don't play. You don't, I don't you don't look at that. I don't. Right? I don't look into that. They're yeah. fucking. I don't care. Now she's you know probably what I'm saying? as making, long as they're not disrespectful. She's probably blatantly making a million dollars a year on Instagram. Nah, right? nah, nah, nah. It ain't like that. I'm sure I wish. I'd be like, yeah, go ahead, babe. Show everything. <laughs> go mean, ahead, man. I just got. I mean, I remember Hanato saying he was like, dude. Every time I see this. <laughs> Hot girl, I my, and then I see Jay Haran in the background. Like, 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 yeah, like that's mine. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, is it hard though to like, uh, man? No, is, is, all, this, is the yeah, sex wild? Good. Is it just insane? Uh, yeah, it's fun. Ugh, I love man. it. She, she's into me. So now, good. how do you get a girl like that? I don't. I don't know. Like, how did you pick her up? <laughs> oh, uh, um, my friend, um, his girlfriend. That was her friend. So. I mean, I said, hey, man, I was single. And, um, you know, I said, uh, what did I say? I said, ask your friend um, if she wants to come train with me. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which kind of hurts me now because my girl, she's a wolf, dude. She's so jealous. She won't. She's like, you don't need to train girls. You're an actor now. Oh, so, no. yeah, I, you know, it's, it's a wrap. Is she Puerto Rican or what, what is she? She's Mexican, French, and um, um, yeah, she's pretty now, I met her mom. Mexican, I know it was her mom, but her she, mom's but, is straight Mexican. Okay, yeah. but where does she get that ass from? Her dad? Like, does I her, don't know. Like, yeah. I, because I don't know where. <laughs> Gym life, squats, and yeah, I don't know. Oh Genetics, God, I guess. Dude. I don't know. I was like, she you got gotta be crazy kidding. booty. I mean, Love good it. for you. No, that's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's probably high maintenance. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm nah, that. she's good. She got a great personality. You know, she's just a woman, though. So any woman is, you know, they get that roller coaster ride. Does she want to marry you? She wants to buy, wants to marry you. Uh, yeah, you know, down the road, she not, you know, pressing me for she's anything. She's 17? She's not, what? No. Yeah, okay. Dude. <laughs> no, Come on, dude. No, no, she's, <laughs> <laughs> she's not 17. I'm not a child molester. No, I know. No, she's, I mean, good for you, though. That, 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 that's, yeah, I, she's I couldn't, cool. She's yeah, cool. I was like, Jay. I she mean, got my back. She's definitely supportive of what I do. She, you know, she don't, she does the girl stuff, stressing me out with, you know, the roller coaster ride, little stuff, but not like you know, ma major issues with my career. Or now, do other girls see that like she's that. your girlfriend and they try to get with you? Because I would assume uh, that she's a magnet for like good Oh, girls. no, they don't try to get with me. They try to get with her. Oh, really? <laughs> she's a chick magic ma magnet uh, for herself. Uh, I mean, dude, it's crazy. I go out with her. They're not, they trying to push me out the way to talk to her. I mean, dude, I've been out with her and. 
Yeah, they but blatantly. But she's in the guys, though. She's not in the girls, right? Or is she in the girls, too? No, she's into one guy, me. Oh, well, I, mean, I meant, like, <laughs> you know what I meant. Uh, nah, she's not really into girls. I mean, she she likes girls. She could appreciate a pretty woman, but, yeah, she's not, like, yeah. you know, let's bring home a girl and get wild or nothing. I mean, dang. Yeah. Yeah, my girl, too. I, I don't yeah, think she, I mean, maybe she a, would for me if I really wanted her to, but I was like, eh. Yeah. I, I probably would too if she really wanted to, but I probably wouldn't just because that would she would fucking chew my head off. Yeah, everything would be about that. Like, oh no, you like you like you like that, right? Like, you want to uh, do it again? Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, you never smile like that with me. Yeah, she yeah, she manipulate. Thing. It'd be a whole new situation that would come up. So yeah. it's like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I, I 100 percent. 100% yeah. the same way. I know some guys can do that, but... And you want never, some strange, never, just Pornhub. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> I, I know. I I know, but dude, it's just hard because I know enough porn stars in my real life that now I know the girls in porn. I feel like I'm cheating because I know actually I actually know the girl that I'm jerking off to. <laughs> like, right? like, oh, or, the, or the girls that like I, st- I knew when they were younger, now they're doing like MILF porn oh, and they're just shit. way too old and it's just... Anyway, it's fucking crazy. Anyway, Jay, so where could people support you, find you. Uh, my Instagram is um, at J Haran. My name J A Y H I E R O N. I got the Twitter still J Haran. Uh, I d- use the Instagram a lot. You know, I tell you know updates of what's going on. Uh, definitely, uh, next film coming out is Equalizer Part Two. That's so cool, I'm man. I'm not sure when it drops. Probably next August. It's just we just wrapped, so they still got. Um, now, why are you not in the Punisher? This this really bothers me. Yeah, because you see me in all the other Marvels, so now it's kind of burnt out. <laughs> oh, no, oh, really? They see my picture for an audition or anything, and they're like, no, Jay Haran, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. They got to bring me back as a recurring character or something. You know right, I mean? right. I just right. How many times can you, can you yeah, get beat up by How many times can I get killed on, on It was so funny, shows. though. I posted a picture of me and you, and someone's like, it's okay, Jay. One day you'll meet a Marvel yeah, character. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. So That's I don't funny. care. So it's, uh, it's funny because I spent so much time in my life and trying to win fights and now I'm doing the same training and stuff tra- yeah. making them look good trying to lose so and you're on, and you're on this new diet I just started uh, this diet called intermittent diet it's pretty I'm trying it out it's pretty good well not trying I've been trying it out for a few few months now two months yeah just because I've been bloated like in the morning so I'm just trying to it's more for fasting so you eat eight hours eat eight hours and fast for 16 Got it. Oh, it's cool, you know, trying it out. Nice. You know, I don't get to uh, spar as much as I used to, and, you know, I'm not ripped like when I was stepping on a scale to fight. So, you know, I got to, you know. You're still in good shape, though. I'm still I'm in great shape. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. track and spar, you know. Yeah, I get yeah. in there a little bit, but, you know, I need a little bit of longer rest. <laughs> but I still get in there. And I don't fight. I have my rules for myself. Like, I'm not going to spar a guy a week out or two weeks out from a fight where he has that eye of the tiger. Right. You know, Has just, that ever happened to you before? Yeah, all the time. The guys in the gym, hey, Jay, come on, I got you next round. I'm like, no, nah, no, you don't, buddy. You know, I mean, I don't want to disrespect him either. Way. He want, he needs that top-notch level of, you know, competition because he has a fight coming up. So, I mean, I'm not on that. I mean, first round, maybe, I got you, but, yeah. you know, I need a round off in now, the now, middle. Now, now, Frank Mir said he used to fuck with Overeem at the gym. They, they used to spar, not Frank Mir, uh, Frank Trigg. They uh-huh. used to spar, and he would just say something like, your hair looks bad, or he would get into his head and to, like, to Overeem. And be like, oh, hey, you, you, look, you look kind of fat lately. Yeah, and it would know. totally fuck with Overeem's head. Really? I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see that. Uh, yeah, I don't. Not, no sure. Uh, but yeah. yeah, it sounds like something Trigg would do probably. You know, paint his paint his toenails. There, there, there's a guy. Frank Trigg's a guy that like really looks down on his MMA career and like thinks that he didn't accomplish. Oh, and I'm no. like, dude, you've accomplished so fucking. Much. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he's great. He did. He's a good dude too, man. I mean, I don't know if you know his personality on when he fought was is different from his him who he really is. He's a really good dude. Really good dude. Yeah. Really yeah. good dude. And you know, some people don't understand that. You know, when you uh, are in the in the game you have a persona about you and you gotta you know whatever sells tickets you gotta you know, play the so heel you play yeah you gotta play the heel whatever you know so you never know what's going on with that but you know in re- reality he's a really good dude are you going to the fights this saturday uh if my man adam has a ticket for me okay, i might i just i just might i'll definitely find my wife's in town so I gotta yeah take her. No, it's all good I uh mean, there's a, i've you, seen i've seen a million million of you them. think cyborg or holly home Ooh, cyborg She's a beast. Yeah. I just think in later rounds, it's just she just keeps coming forward, dude. What about Khabib or Barbosa? Oh, that's a good one. 
Um, I heard Khabib was in the hospital yesterday. I was feeling probably Barbosa. I don't know. But, again, that's what I was going to say, depending on which, which Khabib comes into the cage. I mean, he's relentless, too, when he, you know, takes the guys down. And But, yeah, he's been injured lately. I don't know. What about you know? Neil Magny is fighting Carlos Condit? Oh, uh, Condit. Yeah, I think Condit will yeah, Magny's, put him away. I think he's on his way out. Yeah, you know. It's it's crazy, man. You know what? The thing about what you got to love about a two fighting, it just shows when you're old. It shows it shows when you're done. As it shows when you're on top. It shows when you're, you know, sharp. It shows when you're a beast. It shows the opposite way, too. You know what I mean? When she took a little too much damage, it shows. You know, once yeah. you get in there and it happens overnight, you'll see a guy fight. He looks like a stud one fight. And the next fight, he just like. Damn, what Hendrix. happened? Yeah, you know, it's crazy, man. But it's such so real. That's the realness about the game. That's and the realness said, about uh, fighting. Cowboy Cerrone is going to fight Yancey Medeiros. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I love Cowboy, man. We just actually, Cowboy worked on the movie, too. Oh, really? Yeah, he's on EQ, too. Oh, nice. Equalizer, too. I believe, I'm not sure I wasn't there for for it, but I think uh, um, um, Olaski might be on it as well. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. But, yeah, Cowboy definitely has a part on it. He's in it. Does his thing. I seen some of his footage, what he was doing. It he's a good, good dude. Yeah, he's solid, man. He's solid. I, I really click well with him. You know, Have you ever banged any uh, ring girls or no? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm in a relationship, buddy. Relax. We, it goes back to, yeah, my girl is bad, but, yeah, she's, uh, she's a wolf, too. She, she's a wolf, right? Yeah, right, man. We'll it. be out, and there'll be other girls coming around, and she just pisses on our territory. Like, yeah, yeah I know. Exactly. Beat it. Scram. So, you so, know, I'm like, damn. <laughs> I 100% hear you. So, guys, if you want to see me, uh, I'll be in Vegas the rest of this week till Sunday night, um, including Sunday night. Next week, I'm in Temecula at Pachanga Casino. Uh, then San Diego on the 12th and 13th at the Comedy Palace. And then Seattle at the Underground. And then I'm in Calgary at the Comedy Cave the last week of January. Thank you, uh, Jay Haran. Uh, your story is amazing. They should Thanks, make a movie guys. about it, a book <laughs> starring you. you never know. Uh, Maybe one day. You're a very inspirational dude. Yo, Fucking Freeport, thanks. people. Freeport, baby. Freeport. In the building. Yes. Uh, thank you guys so much. Traps, Take care. Traps, 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 Sons to hook him, Dorpotan. Tather stolen, Dorpotamoro. Yeah, yeah, yeah.